In this video, I'm gonna show you the easiest way to set up a WhatsApp connection inside of N8N to power your AI agents and automations. First, we'll go through the process of creating your app inside of Meta's Business Suite and Developer Portal. Then, I'll show you how to configure both the trigger and action notes so you can send and receive WhatsApp messages inside of N8N. And finally, we'll go through three real-world use cases for these WhatsApp notes so you can start incorporating these into your own builds, automations, and AI agents. Let's dive into it. All right, so here I am inside of N8N, and I wanna get started here going over this green section, which is gonna be our first example of setting up a WhatsApp message trigger. What we wanna do is have this listener set up that's gonna receive messages from WhatsApp on this messages trigger, do some kind of processing inside a basic LLM chain call, and then finally set a result. So just a dead simple automation here that's gonna require a WhatsApp business credential. If you've not created this trigger before, go ahead and click plus, search for WhatsApp business cloud, and then under triggers, you're gonna be able to select this on message trigger. That's gonna be the exact same details here that I showcased from before. So if I pull this up and click on the credential I wanna connect, we don't have anything set up yet. So we're gonna go through this process from start to finish. I'll click on create new credential and we're gonna need a client ID and client secret. So in order to get this set up, we now have to switch over to business.facebook.com and go ahead and log in with our Facebook account. I'm gonna assume you already have that set up. The next thing we need here, which is really the first prerequisite for creating a WhatsApp credential, is gonna be a business portfolio. And so I have a dead simple one set up here just for Lucas's business. And so depending on if you're building this for your own business or for a client's business, you may need to approach this a little bit differently. If you're building this for your own business, go to the sidebar, click on create a business portfolio, and then get started filling out this form with your own business details. So you need your name, your contact information, and a business email to get started there. The other thing you'll need to do here before you can create a WhatsApp app is gonna be verifying your account. Meta requires you to either add a credit card to verify this or a phone number. And so make sure when you create this, you go through this verification steps or else you may get stuck sending and receiving messages. I have my portfolio set up here. And so that's what we're gonna go forward with. The other thing I wanna cover here is if you're building this for a client's business. If they don't yet have a business portfolio, they'll need to go through those exact same setup steps to go ahead and create that. If they do already have a business portfolio, you'll need to instruct them to invite you here under the user section. So you have full control of creating a WhatsApp app inside of Meta's business suite. So that's really the first prerequisite I wanna cover here and make sure you get that set up first. The next thing we need to do is go ahead and go under accounts, apps, click on add, and that's gonna kick off the process to create a new business app. Select this top option here, which is create a new app ID. And if you don't yet have your details verified, this may be great app for you. So be sure you get your business portfolio verified. I'll click this. And that should take me over to developers.facebook.com and go through a new wizard. We're gonna go ahead and fill this out. It just says Lucas and it end test. Set your app contact email to what you want. Click on next. And then once we get to use cases, scroll down to the bottom and click on other. Click next and make sure you select business as your app type. You can't change this later. And so it's important to get that right for this first selection. Otherwise you're gonna to have to recreate this. Click on next confirm your details, and then click on create app. And that's gonna set our app up. After that finishes processing, you're gonna see a screen that looks like this back on developers.facebook.com. I'm gonna go ahead and click on set up WhatsApp here. We have to then go under app settings, basic. And this is where we're gonna grab our first two values for this N8N credential we're trying to create. We need our app ID and our app secret. So I'll go ahead and copy these now. So we'll take our app ID, plug that in to where it says client ID, and then we'll come back here and see where it says app secret. We'll click show, copy this, and then paste that in. So after I click save here, we should see a green connection. And that means we've set up everything correctly. The final thing we need to do here in order to receive messages as our n n trigger is gonna be coming down to this WhatsApp section, going to API setup, and then click on generate access token. This is gonna take you through this dialog that allows you to select which WhatsApp account you wanna authorize. Make sure you go through those steps and click approve on each. We'll copy this token and keep this on the clipboard because we're gonna need this later. And so now if we come back to N8N and make sure that our credential is now set up here, we should be able to click on execute workflow for our WhatsApp message trigger. So that sets up this listener here in test mode. 
and then I'll send in a test message. Hey, this is a Lucas test. So that's gonna get sent in, and there we go. Our message was received. It was passed into this basic LLM chain call, and we have the JSON value right here. And so we should be able to just grab the messages with the first index and do text, and that should give us the body text that was just received from WhatsApp. So that's matching what we're expecting. And then at the end here, we're just trying to have this formatted as markdown. So if I run it again, we should be able to see that this works. Hey, this is a Lucas test too. That should trigger. We're gonna format this as markdown. And then our output here is gonna be this code block for us to see in markdown format. So there we go. That is the example number one of setting up a message trigger that can start your end-to-end -end workflows, AI agents, or any other type of automations you're trying to build, all triggered by WhatsApp. Let's move forward to step number two, which is gonna be setting up our WhatsApp AI agent. In this workflow, we're gonna have that same WhatsApp message trigger that fires on any message received. We're gonna pass that message into an AI agent, and we're gonna have it write a response that we send back to the original sender in WhatsApp. So in order to send a message, there's one additional credential we need to set up, which is gonna be grabbing that access token we generated from before. So if we activate this and pull it up and click on credential, we're gonna see that we don't yet have that credential we created from before, and that's because we have to make this new one. So let's go through that step right now. I'll click create credential, and we're gonna be asked for this access token and our business account ID. I'll come back to developers.facebook.com come down here under the API setup for this WhatsApp menu, click on generate access token, and then just go through that reconnection step. So I'll do that now so you can see what that looks like. So that happened really quick. We copy it and we paste it back in. The next thing we need is our business account ID. So we'll come back here, scroll down, and look for this value that says WhatsApp business account ID. We can copy this, paste it in here, click save, and we have our green connection tested successfully. The other few things we need to set up here are gonna be how we reply back to the original person sending in. But before we do that, we do need to whitelist our own cell phone number. So this recipient value we pass in here can get sent back to us. So let's come back here under API setup and then look at this two dropdown field specified here. I'll pull this up and then select my phone number, which is gonna allow it to be whitelisted. This is just for our test mode here that is gonna allow us to send and receive for free. If you don't yet have a number saved to your account, click on manage phone number list, and then you're gonna be able to go through this process of adding your own phone number with your own country code specified. So make sure you have that set up, and if you refresh that, this should be saved. So now that the phone number has been added in to the whitelist, and we do have our credential set up for the send message action, and once again, if you wanna pull this in manually, just search for WhatsApp Business Cloud, go down to actions, message actions, and then click on send message. And you'll get this exact same node here with the message resource and the send operation. Let's now go ahead and pull this up again and fill out these missing values. Under sender phone number or ID, we wanna go ahead and pass in the one that appears for us, which is our test phone number automatically created for us by Facebook. Under recipient's phone number, we wanna change this to an expression and we're gonna go ahead and paste in this JavaScript expression right here, where we look at our message trigger, which is actually supposed to be WhatsApp agent trigger. So I'll grab that. We look at our WhatsApp agent trigger. We're gonna get its output item, look at the JSON field, and we're gonna look at the first contact that is included there in the JSON response and use this dot WA underscore ID property. That's gonna be the phone number of the person who messaged into our AI agent. And so we wanna send our reply back to them. When you're using this in test mode, like I said before, make sure you have whitelisted your own number. Otherwise that's gonna fail. Under text body, let's go ahead and look at our output of the previous AI agent node. And so I'll just do a JSON, JSON.stringify. And we'll look at the JSON output. And so we, we can clean this up a little bit later. That's just gonna get some value passed in. Let's go ahead and test this agent now and see if we can receive a message, process something with this AI agent node we've connected, and then get a reply. Really quickly, if I pull this up, we're gonna see that we're just gonna be grabbing the first message and it's text.body that's included in the WhatsApp message. Very similar to what we did here on our first LLM chain call. 
So I'll go ahead and click on the second trigger here, which is gonna be our WhatsApp agent trigger. So this is listening. I'll click execute. Then I'll ask, what is the hot dog eating rolled record? We'll send that in. It's gonna get listened to. It's gonna get processed by our AI agent. And it says it was successfully sent back. And so let's see if we get some data. So we got this formatted output here. Let's see if we can clean that up again by going to json.output. We'll send it again. And let's look what we get. And so as of my latest information, the world record for hot dog eating is held by Joey Chestnut. And so there it is. We have our full processing of a message trigger listening in processed by an AI agent and a real response getting sent back. Before I move on to step number three here, I do want to mention that we are going to be giving away this full N8N workflow, all of the prompts used in here, and the full setup steps on this left-hand side completely for free. And so if you want to get access to it, it's super easy. Just click on the first link in the description of this YouTube video, and you're going to get taken to our school community called AI Automation Mastery. After you get in there, just go to the N8N templates section, search for the same name of the title of this YouTube video, and then once you pull that up, you're going to be able to see the link to the video all of the JSON NADN workflow templates, and then any prompts used. And so be sure to join the community to get access to all of this completely for free. All right, let's move on to number three, which is gonna be setting up our WhatsApp human in the loop approval flow. Really excited to show you this one because this is something we use all the time here at the recap for our content creation workflows and automations. Basically what human in the loop does is it enables you to pause any NADN workflow or automation and wait for a human response to come back in. For example, we use this on our own AI automation that writes a newsletter every single day covering AI news. And so during the automation, our workflow comes here and it actually pauses on this node where it waits for human feedback. And so we've kind of bundled up all this data, wrote a bunch of content, and we wanna wait for myself or someone else on our team to give it a thumbs up or thumbs down before it continues on with additional processing. If it does get approved, we continue forward. If we reject it and add feedback in, our system loops back through here and tries again. So setting up notes like this is super useful for the complex content creation workflows you're working on or anything that you may want to take a closer look at before either creating final content publishing, or maybe sending off to an external third party like over email. So let's go through how to set this up with our WhatsApp node. I have just a simple workflow set up here with a manual trigger, and we're gonna use this node right here that is gonna send and wait for an approval message. So we're gonna go ahead and use our test phone number right here. I'm gonna go ahead and enter my own phone number manually so we can just see that quickly here in WhatsApp. And then I just write a simple message here where I'm gonna ask if I like this poem. We're gonna set response type to approval, but you can actually get more advanced here with free text that allows us to enter free form text back that can be used and looped over as feedback, kind of like what I showcased right here in our newsletter workflow. Or you can make a custom form that has multiple different options that a user can submit. We're just gonna do the simple approve deny option for now so we can continue forward. And then we'll just leave these as defaults. So let's come down here, click on our manual trigger, and let's execute this. So that's gonna spin. We're gonna see this gets highlighted here as purple. And then if I scroll down, we're gonna see that message I hard coded in. Do you like my poem? My fridge whispered softly, you're hungry, my friend. So I open the door and the snacks never end. So that got sent in just like a regular message. And then at the bottom here, we have this approve link generated by NADN. So I can click this and we're gonna see that it was received and that is gonna cause our workflow then to continue. If I open this up, we can see this data field that has an approved value that shows it's equal to true. And so you can build automations like this that listen for this value where it says approved or denied, and that can drive additional logic or additional functionality on whatever type of system you're trying to build. Let's now extend this a little bit further so I can show you how to change this approve and deny workflow. So I'll pull this up again. If we come down to approval options, click add option, we can then change this to approve and disapprove. So there should be two button labels or two link labels that appear in our final message. So I'll save this. Let's go ahead and run this manual trigger once again. It's gonna send this message and it's gonna be waiting here under purple. And if I pull this up, we can see that we now have two different options appearing here. So that's how we can send this message to have different branching functionality. I'll decline this one. That's gonna send that message in. And then if I come back to my workflow, we should see that our approved value was set to false. 
And so then if you want to take this forward, you can use an if node and branch off this value if this is equal to true or false. We can then send it in two different directions. So that's how you set up the human in the loop approval flow with your WhatsApp integration. All right, before you go, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button. Seriously, do it because we're going to be breaking down all of the AI automations that we use to run all of our businesses. They're super helpful and we're going to break down exactly how we do them on this YouTube channel. So make sure to like and then subscribe and then you'll get notified when we publish new workflows that can make your businesses run 20 times more efficiently, just like we're seeing here at The Recap and the other businesses that we're running. The other item is join our school community for free. The link's in the description. You'll be able to get this template, this automation that we just ran through in this video, completely for free. You can go to school, navigate to the video that you want, and then you can download the JSON output for the N8N automation. So like and subscribe, Join our free community to get this automation for yourself and we'll see you in the next video.